Live from Studio A, The 630 Show with Dave Gray. Can you go ahead and applaud? And why not? Thank you, the wide shot. They have to use that with me. Hi, it's me, Dave, and welcome to this week's show. We're going to be meeting Liz on the show, my good friend Liz. You'll like her, trust me. She'll, she'll explore our wild and wacky world. God, I hate that phrase. In that segment of our show tonight, also later on in the show, we'll be talking with a man who claims he can teach you to beat the polygraph test. Yes, Doug Williams from Oklahoma will join us live via the phone. <laughs> Taped via the phone, not nearly as neat. But first, this week's edition of Media Bites. Hey, here it is. This week, the long awaited Girls of the Office. Oh, oh, the Girls of the Oval Office issue. That's what it is right there, Time Magazine. It hit the knees, I mean the stands this week. Okay, switch it. Okay, everybody, I'm sorry, I gotta leave. I gotta go meet with some hookers and cheap liquor. I mean, I gotta go to Central America. Yeah, that's where I'm going, Central America. Chick, hey, there's been some trouble with Air Force One, Hillary. I think it's going down. Okay, click, click it. At Larry's used vehicles, the all motorcycles and jet skis must go sale didn't go this week quite as planned yesterday. See, you like that? Hey, and this is from the E! News file. Wisconsinites are mad at their phone companies. Now, complaints about being slammed and crammed topped the state consumer protection department's list of consumer gripes. Now, people are mad. They want to know why are there more than one phone company? How can they charge for their services on a phone bill? They're mad at the long distance company has been changed without permission and now even about calls from telemarketers trying to get them to switch phone companies. Phone company practices accounted for most of the consumer gripes the department handled last year. Well, let me tell you something. I've had some problem with my personal charges and I am sick and tired of being charged when I have been on the phone. I have been charged way, way too much. I don't know why why they charge me like they do it's I, I every time i get my phone bill here's this bit what hey get that out of here there's not 900 that's not involved there's no ladies on there that's not once in a while i call janet pyatt and she talks about her big doppler uh coming up later <laughs> it's a long story <laughs> hey calista flockhart here she is she didn't actually win it but it came down to a question of need so the big mike sub winner is calista flockhart how about for her? we'll give it to her maybe she'll need it who knows two weeks ago that came down to the Big Mike, whoever emails me first sub contest. Now, here was the deal. The real winner of the Big Mike sub is, drum roll. Thanks, it's Mark McConville. Mark McConville, you came in first with an email at 101 a.m. What the hell you're doing on the computer? And there's no dirty pictures and you're, you're emailing me at 101 a.m.? What's wrong with you? A blistering second. Oh, geez, listen to this, 60 seconds is all you lost by second place, guy. I won't say your name. And now, last week's contest. We gotta get all these contests in. You remember this picture right here? Go to the picture. There you go, babe. Now, he wanted your caption. He wanted to see who won a coupon for a Rocky Rococo's pizza. So we gave you the picture. We received so many entries. By the way, thank you. They were all funny, except for one that wasn't that good. One of them stood out as being, I shouldn't have said that, but there was a crappy one. One stood out, you know who you are. One stood out that was good. And here it is right here. This is the new caption, it's winning. Hey everybody, I'm Mike, and these are my testicles. There it is, that's the winner, and my producer thought it was okay to say the word testicles on the 6.30 show. Why not? So, that's the lucky winner. It goes to Tom Clear at MyCampus.com. Thanks for your entry, Tom. We're gonna contact you, we'll get your address, we'll send you the prize. Keep watching, keep emailing us. Don't forget our email address is Dave630Show at Yahoo.com. That's it for Media Bites this week. Sorry I screwed up the first joke so bad. Keep watching because we'll be watching you. Stay tuned! We have a great show coming up. It improves after this point. You meet a very funny woman named Liz who just recently finished a tour of the Outback and later on we'll be talking with Doug Williams, a man who can teach you how to beat the polygraph test in less than 10 seconds. Here we go. Hey, have you seen Dilbert yet? Here's Dilbert. Look at Dilbert. Back now on the 6.30 show with me, Dave Gray, but obviously I'm not alone because for some reason the picture's not quite so unappealing, is it? <laughs> no. Joining me now, the funniest woman on the planet, Liz Diedrich. Hello, Liz Diedrich. Hello. That's Liz Diedrich. You guys are going to see her from time to time here on the 6.30 show, helping us explore the world. She'll be going over here, maybe some nudist things, that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's in the contract, you didn't see it. And Liz... Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming aboard. I have to act like I just met you. Oh, Good to well, see you. Nice to meet you, I'm looking you, forward to Mr. learning Gray. more about you and your family. You seem yes. like a lovely woman. Yes, thank you. Um, Liz, I, just so everybody knows, a year ago, we, uh, we had a show. I'm going to put that in quotes. 
We were yes, uh, quote show. We were doing a, uh, uh, I guess you would call it more than anything, a, um, uh, what do they call it when you get, oh, community service. <laughs> That's what we were doing. And we had a show there doing community <laughs> service. And, uh, and I promised her that we would, and it was exactly one year ago to the day that we would one day work together. And finally, Liz had a chance to work together. Liz, what, what did you do? What did you come up with? What did I come up with? Yeah, what did you do? Well, I got to talk to the creative cast and crew of the new animated series, Dilbert. Cool. Yes, yes, a creation of cartoonist Scott Adams. And he skewers the world, world, excuse me, of American workplace on a daily basis. First, I wanted to talk with a creepy drifter looking guy in pajamas, who just happens to be one of the creators, Larry Charles. To me, the main theme of the show is uh, the logical man in an illogical world. <clears throat> and that to me is the, uh, is the theme that we sort of explore each week. And when Dilbert questions things, often the whole social order breaks down because of it. Phase one, we need a name for the product. Uh, that's actually the last step. You've got the transparencies out of order. He doesn't like being corrected. Now he must do something terrible to you. Something to teach us all a lesson. Chris Elliott, you've never done anything of value without the help of Ben Stiller or David Letterman. Obviously, the question remains. What's the relationship like between Dogbert and Dilbert? Dilbert is uh, Dogbert's master, but of course Dogbert feels like that he's Dilbert's master. He's uh, pretty sarcastic, he's pretty self-absorbed, and uh, um, pretty much feels that he's superior to everyone else around him. If this works, someday all showers will be voice activated. 99, please. 99. The shower is calibrated to respond to my voice only. Well, you think of everything. I'm cautious. That's why you had training wheels on your bike until you were 17. I was 14. 14. <laughs> Kathy Griffin, you star in the mediocre series Suddenly Susan as an annoying redheaded secretary. Now, the world of animation gives you a chance to really stretch and play an annoying redheaded secretary. Alice is just everyone, she, she's that moment you have in the middle of the day when you can't believe the chaos around you and you go, oh, why can't they just figure it out? Wally. Yes? Push the button. Why, just because I'm standing near them? Yes. I pushed the button yesterday. Wally, do what Alice says. Now why should I get... Oh. Oh. Finally, Dilbert creator Scott Adams, with offices and workplaces using Dilbert as a guide for politics in the workplace, are you a philosopher or a dork? I'm not philosophical about it all. The, the whole deal for me, the, the entire deal is I draw these little cartoons and I hope that people laugh at them. And that's kind of the end of my model right there. Oh, good job. Go ahead. Thank you. You can see the animated series Dilbert right here on TVW Saturday nights at 10 p.m. Saturday nights at 10 p.m. I wasn't aware TVW was on the air other than 6.30 on Tuesdays. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, tune in and see that. Liz, great job. Thank you very much. You are amazing, and you, you've earned your keep, young lady. I'll which figure of course out the teleprompter yet. Would be nothing. I'm starting to learn it myself. Gave away uh, the secrets. Coming up next, I'll do comedy for another 10 years and learn how to deliver a joke. And the death of honesty and the man who can teach you how to beat the polygraph test. Doug Williams joins us via phone from Oklahoma. 270-9933 is the number to call, and that's no lie. Back here on the 6.30 show, and, uh, and now joining me live from Oklahoma, the author of How to Steam the Polygraph, it's Doug Williams. Doug, you there? Doug? Babe? Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. How are you, Doug? I'm mighty fine. How are you doing? Well, uh, Doug, I'm lovely. And, and uh, I'm very inquisitive, and we've had a lot of already a lot of people inquiring about this. The polygraph machine. Now, just to set things up, who you are, you are a former detective, correct? A yeah, sergeant? I was, I was a police detective sergeant at the Oklahoma City Police Department. Uh, I was on the force for 10 years, the last six years of which I was a full-time polygraph examiner. I administered about 6,000 polygraph examinations during that time. And I went through and read a lot of stuff about you. I've read a lot, as, as much as I could find. And uh, A, you are the authority on this. You've been on, uh, on 60 Minutes with Diane Sawyer, where you, you, you taught her what you call your sting technique, correct? Right. Well, the reason I, I call it a sting is. is because you, you're conning a con man, and he doesn't know that he's been conned. There you go. All right. Well, t tell us how the sting technique works. Well, basically, uh, 
the, what the polygraph actually records, it's, it's, a, it's a very crude, crude instrument. It, it records uh, three physiological responses. Uh, you're breathing, and that's recorded by, uh, via uh, what they call pneumotubes, which are placed around the chest and stomach. Okay. It records the sweat activity on your hand, uh, basically on two fingers of your right hand, uh, via electrodes that are placed on the first and third fingers of your right hand. It records what's known as a, a galvanic skin response. And it also records your blood pressure and your pulse rate, and this is recorded by a cardio cuff that's placed around your left arm. Now, the polygraph uh, mistakenly uh, says that because you have a reaction, and a reaction is a, uh, an, an erratic breathing pattern, uh, an increase in blood pressure, and an increase in the GSR reading, that because you've had this quote-unquote reaction, that you have lied. Now, my problem with that is that any number of innocent stimuli can cause the exact same reaction that would brand you as a lie. And that's what I want to ask you, Doug. After administering over 9,000 tests, is it possible to be this person administering this test and to be able to say to somebody uh, the proper question or elicit the proper response to get whatever result you want? Absolutely. Uh, the, just the tone of the examiner's voice can elicit a response, but the, the problem is that the, the polygraph equates nervousness with deception, and there's, there's no equation to that. Uh, and also the fact that one of the reasons I quit uh, administering them and, and started fighting the, the use of them uh, is simply that, that with just a very slight amount of, of information, you can control every tracing on the chart. Uh, I remember when I was on the police force, one of, the, one, of the, one of my friends came in and said, you know, you've been doing this for quite a number of years. Uh, is it possible for you to beat it? Well, and I, you know, that's all I did was run tests uh, day after day, and I sat there one day and, Hooked myself up on the on the polygraph machine, and I said, "Well, now I know I know what what I'm looking for. I know what 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 constitutes a quote unquote reaction." And uh, over the years, I had determined that there were about five or six basic breathing patterns that that were that were shown when a person was nervous or when they were when they were reacting to a question. Well, Doug, there's the there's the EPPA that comes into question now. That's the Employee Polygraph. Protection right. Act, correct? Right. I spent a number of years getting that law passed in, uh, that, that bill passed into law. It prohibits its, its use in the private sector. And that was December of 88 that the right. law was passed in law. And, and what I wonder about that law is, how much does that defend someone? Can your boss still come to you and say, yes, we'd like you to take a polygraph test? I, is that illegal completely now if you worked in the private sector? It's, it's allowed under very uh, under, under certain very narrow narrow provisions. Uh, and, in some cases, the, of course, now there, there, there are those who are excluded from the law, and those are the ones that, that, that generally are, are in touch with me on, on trying to get my manual and so that they can pass the test. Uh, the government is allowed to administer polygraph examinations to almost any employee that's, that, that's a member of the intelligence services or with, with federal law enforcement. Because there was a time where you could be working at Blockbuster Video and they could make you take this test. I mean, they, uh, and, and what you're going to lie about there, I don't know. If somebody comes in and goes, hey, do you have a copy of Airbud? You know, yeah, uh, but you no. know it was, a, it was a real it was a real trauma for a lot of people because not only did they have to have to take this test in order to get the job, many times they had to continue to take them every six months in order to keep the job. And you know what you've got here is you've got a, a very strong possibility of being blackballed from your employment, being fired from your job simply because your breathing becomes somewhat erratic, your your fingers start to sweat. And your, your blood pressure increases. And I'm just simply saying that there are any number of things that can cause this exact same reaction. Doug, that's a good place mean, for us to stop. don't mean you're lying. I'm going to have to stop, and I'll tell you why. Because, quite frankly, my fingers are starting to sweat, and my blood is starting to flow a little faster than normal. I'm worried about that, so we're going to take a break and come back. Is that all right? Great. All right, we're going to take a commercial break. More Doug Williams, your questions about the polygraph. How do you beat it? We'll have more answers for you. 270-9933, that's the truth. Hey, by the way, if you want to join me in the studio for one of my shows and the expansive studio audience here at the 630 Show, two ways for you to request tickets. Number one, use the postal service. It's the old thing with the guy in the shorts, the dog kills. Send your written request along with a self address stamped envelope, as if any of you have ever done that, to the screen right here. There's that address, blah, 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 725 Raymond Road. Or you can email me at dave630show at yahoo.com. Now, you can email me anything about the show right here. Dave630show at yahoo.com. There's my big finger. Also, you know, email me if you think I need a manicure. And the first person to email me tonight gets $5. Dave630show at yahoo.com. Yes, they do. My producer said no. Uh, I'm rigged up to a lie detector already, as you can tell. Doug, 
Doug Williams, are you there? I'm here, Dave. We are talking with Doug Williams. This man has administered over 9,000 lie detector tests, and now he has a manual that can teach you how to beat the lie detector. Doug, we have some calls on the line. we got Tony from Stoughton. Tony, please tell us what you have to say and, and really make us love you. Yeah, I, was, I want to know Doug's opinion on the, like the polygraph, an old-fashioned type test. What does he know about this new voice stress test that's coming out? Doug, anything? Well, the voice stress analyzers is really not new. It's been out for quite some time. As a matter of fact, it is, it is also outlawed, in, specifically outlawed in the provisions of the Employee Polygraph Protection Act. So if uh, any employers out there are thinking that the, because that this is new to them, that this somehow is a way that they can, they can bypass this uh, Employee Polygraph Protection Act, uh, they just need to educate themselves that this is this is also outlawed. Uh, it is it is used in, in certain circumstances uh, where the where there are there are exclusions to the Employee Polygraph Protection Act. It is even more of a joke if that's possible. Even more of a joke than the polygraph. What it is? works on the theory that because you have a certain tremor in your voice, that this indicates the deception. Uh, it Tony, could indicate. Tony, yes, sir. Tony, are you working in a place right now where they're making you take that test? Well, I, I have. I have taken the test but it was kind of a condition of being hired that's illegal then isn't it am i wrong doug yes that is that is very much illegal as a matter of fact if they use that as a condition of employment uh all you have to do there's some pretty strong teeth in that uh, in that employee polygraph protection act all you have to do is contact the department of labor and they will uh, file uh, charges against these people and could find them up to fifteen thousand dollars and it's also possible for you to get uh, punitive damages if you've been if they've used this as a condition of employment tony write down this email address right now you ready okay dave 630 show at yahoo.com send me some information to you or okay. send me some information from you i guess would be the proper thing the teleprompter again and i will uh i will guarantee you that you uh that you get some information from this man and also you know what I can tell you uh, how you can get in touch. D Doug, you have your website. You are at www.polygraph.com, correct? Right. And right on that front page, I've listed it for free. Uh, anybody can download it free. Right on that front page, I have in, in, in blue letters about midways down the page, it says Employee Polygraph Protection Act. Just get on there, double-click that. It brings up the entire federal statutes, every page, every paragraph, and it, it's very clear in there that this, this is outlawed, and it, it gives you... Uh, the directions how to contact the Department of Labor to get redressed for your grievances. Well, hopefully Tony will be able to find some, uh, if not monetary, at least something, to, some way to heal his grievances. We have Lewis, who I believe has never called the 630 show before, right here on line one. Lewis, hi, how are you? Good evening, how you doing? Lewis, first time caller, long time listener? Uh, actually, more second than first. <laughs> I know, I thought so. <laughs> Lewis, you have a question, go for it. Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, anybody has taken the polygraph test and uh, people have gotten the people for being guilty, but later had found out that they were actually innocent. Good question, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's why you started, Doug. I just, and I, had, I didn't say this at the beginning, and I wanted to. You, you, you decided to do this because you felt you had committed crimes against humanity. Am I correct? And, and you wanted yeah, to do a, a lot of what I did was was really unconscionable. Uh, it was it was very effective. The polygraph's a good confession getter, but the polygraph itself is the, the more I the more I educated myself about what it did and just by observing what I what I was observing, I found that it actually is it's not a lie detector. It's it's a real sick joke in that it has a built-in mm -hmm. bias against the truthful person. Okay, in Doug, other we words, only have, more, Doug. We only have about 20 seconds to wrap this up real quick. I just want to thank you for being on the show and tell people to stop in at your website. That's www.polygraph.com. And I want to thank you again for all the information you've given us. Thank you, Dave. Enjoyed it. Doug, thank you for being on the show. You take care of yourself. Real quickly, uh, now, that, now that Doug's gone, I didn't like him. I'm kidding. I love Doug. But what I, that was a lie. See? I got buzzed. I did want to say goodbye to Joe DiMaggio. And uh, so, if we can, there he is. You're the best, man. <laughs>